Hi, in this video we're going to start building out our database. Now we're going to use one database for all of our application development. So whether you're, you know, using C++, PHP, Python, whatever, we're going to have the same database uh, to build out one application across all these different um, systems. And so what we're going to do is first of all we're going to open up the database uh, in the workbench. So this will take a second to open, and then what we're going to do is, um, once we create the database, we're going to open up our IDE, and this will be specific to each IDE unless you're doing it from the command line. And we want the IDE, um, whether we're doing for PHP, again, C++, Delphi, uh, we want it to be aware of the database also. So this is a two-step process. Um, so in the workbench that we installed in the last video, um, we have a database that's installed on our computer. So when I double click on this, um, we assigned it uh, the user's root with a password password. At this point, we're not worried about security. Um, we'll have videos on that later on, but realize that this isn't secure. Um, and here we have the default database. This is another one I've started playing around with. Um, but let's go ahead and create a new one. So we're going to click on this. The symbol is a symbol of a database. And where it says new schema, this is going to be the name of our database. So let's call this, um, let's see, temp. Since we're just doing this on a temporary basis. Now when we hit apply, what it's showing you is that uh, this tool, um, it, it creates a, a SQL statement, SQL, SQL. Um, and SQL is its own language, and this is the language of the database. And so while you told it through the GUI to create the database, it's actually showing you the SQL command or the code to, to do that. So when we hit apply, it runs its own SQL code that it generated for us. So now we have this new temp database. And uh, there's really nothing in here, um, but at least we've created it. So now that we've done that, what we, want, what we want to do is go to our environment. So again, it doesn't matter which language you're building it out. We're going to show um, the Rad Studio. Uh, so I'm just going to pick one here. But this, once we build this out, this will apply to C++, Delphi, and Rad PHP. And we'll have to do this for other IDEs that we're using as well. So if we're doing Java, we may do this in, in NetBeans or Eclipse. Um, but so once you have your environment set up and running, it makes it easier. So when this comes up, here we go. Um, and you don't have to create a project or anything. You'll see over here that we have this project, nothing defined. We have a model view, which we haven't gone into yet. And then we have the data explorer. So when we click on this, you can see all of the databases that it supports out of the box. But we're going to uh, do this with MySQL. So uh, since we've created a new database, we'll click on this and then I'll right click and hit add new connection. And this was our temp. Let's click OK. And open this. There we go. And now we can see our views. Table, views, procedures, functions, synonyms. If I click on this, there's nothing there. We didn't create a table. So we'll give it a second to realize that. OK. Oh, let me see if we did this right. Modify connection. Oh, yeah, we didn't set up the connection. So we assigned this temp, but we never modified the connection. So if I right-click now on this temp database, select Modify Connection, um, our server name is localhost, since we have this installed on our local machine. Uh, the database name was temp. The user is root. Oop, I did not spell that right. Root, and then our password is password. Okay, now what we want to do is test connection. Ah, there we go. Connection succeeded, so we can click OK. Now, we still don't have a table in there. Think of a table as like a spreadsheet, right? Um, but it's under the management of the database. So we don't have that available yet. So if I right-click on this, now I can select New Table. And here we can start building this out. Um, and let's say we want to capture some information. Um, let's say we want to... I don't know, capture names of our, our customers. So the first thing that we're going to do is like in a spreadsheet, uh, on the left-hand side is the numbers. So you can see the number of rows in the spreadsheet, in our case, database. So we're going to build this out, and we're going to call that an ID. And this will be important later on. Um, but it has a specific purpose. 
we're going to make this an integer and uh, we don't need to worry about precision and this is going to be our primary key this is going to keep count of the tables in the database and let's say that we want to capture the customer's last name and this can make it we can make this character I'm going to select Varkar and let's say we want their first name do the same on the database side um, we'll go into y and int y and character y of our car and everything else but we're just building this out for now and let's see we want their phone number okay our car and uh, what we do want to select is you know what there there can be some uh, long names out there so we'll just select 20. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're not uh, cutting off half their name phone number 10 that's probably about right all right so now the tricky thing here is that um, if I right click on this tab and select close page then it asks me to save it so we can save changes and we're going to call this customer okay and um, again this will be specific to all of our our development because we haven't even opened a project so we can we can use this for all of our applications and there we have our new database we have our table and we have the fields for that table. So we'll see you in the next video when we start building out the application.